Hello, my name's Chris Paul and I am the CEO and founder of Man on Inverclyde, a mental health charity based in Greenock in the west of Scotland. And we're bringing you this message today to raise awareness of mental health and raise awareness of our charity and how we can maybe support you, your friends or your loved ones if you need it. Now, we started off as a suicide prevention charity and we're continuing that mission. We want to break the stigma attached to mental health. We want to break the stigma my attached to men's mental health and I know that a lot of men will be listening to this podcast so please get in touch with us via Man on Inverclyde on social media and um, you'll find us on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. If you're not on social media and you want to get in touch with us via email just type in support at manoninverclyde.com our landline here is 01475-910258. So yeah, get in touch with us if you're struggling with your own mental health or you're concerned about a friend or a family member, one of our staff members, our volunteers here to support you. Thanks for listening. Hello and welcome to the Gallon Few Rangers podcast. My name's Carl McDuff and I'll be your host tonight as we look ahead to Rangers' semi-final tie against RB Leipzig. But more importantly, we everyone at the Gallon Few, we want to pass on our condolences to the family of Jimmy Bell, the Rangers legend who sadly passed away last night. Here to talk about what's going to be a huge game and it's obviously a very emotional day for everybody connected with Rangers today. First of all, Mason Stewart. Mason, how are you? Yeah, well, good, thanks, Colin. Thanks for having us uh, back on. Um, yeah, just like to echo that. Thoughts with Jimmy Bell and family. Um, Rangers legend, um, you know, listening and hearing to some of the stories about him today. Just, uh, yeah, just echoing, um, you know, uh, everyone's thoughts uh, with, with his family at this time. No, absolutely. And there's been some beautiful, lovely, thoughtful tributes coming out. And just to give everybody a heads up, this will be maybe the first 10, 15 minutes of the pod will be a bit sombre, but it's only right. Um, Mason, this guy, this guy was the Rangers kit man from before we were born. Is it 30, 37 years, 38 years. Uh, unbelievable. Today. Mental. He's, he's seen some unbelievable days um, following Rangers. He's seen it right from the bench. He's had the best seat in the house. So, uh, but yeah, just just listening, just you know, obviously before, um, you know, last ten years before that, just hearing what he was like, seeing even the videos, Rangers TV videos, he seems quite, you know, the Gerard one always gets me. He seems, you know, when he says hello, Mister Gerard, he seems typical Glaswegian, then he quite 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 moody, but obviously just pure Rangers Rangers man, and uh, yeah, we've, you know, we've obviously lost Walter Smith um, earlier on in the season and, and, and another legend uh, we've lost today Yep Also joining us tonight Davey Pollock Davey how are you keeping today mate? Smashing guys Smashing Good to be here back <clears throat> Looking forward to Thursday night but you know as has already been said about <clears throat> Jimmy Bell I, I mean one of our own a, a Rangers supporter who, who worked for Rangers and, and it shone through in Jimmy you know uh, <clears throat> absolute legend 41 trophies he was uh, with the club for so just an incredible haul. So, but and and as Mason's alluded to, the, the stories are legendary about Jimmy being being a wee bit grumpy. But you know, I think it was, uh, I think Jimmy would just put put it under maintaining the standards. You know, in in terms of uh, his dealings with the players. You know, keeping them in their place. Uh, you're playing for Rangers, son. So, oh, fantastic. <clears throat> And it was um, it was part of the club for I think I seen the start almost a third of the club's trophies. Um, the standards went a long way, obviously, didn't they, Davy? Yeah, I mean, he was. Uh, you just know from the, the the stories that the players how much respect they had for him, you know, and uh, it was he, they knew because I think someone posted that uh, you know he had the kind of this gruff exterior, but he had a heart the size of a house, you know, and. And I think that came across, you know, in, in, in the videos, you know, that they were posting today. It's uh, and the the wee moment, you know, I think which mm-hmm. which got to me today, to be honest, when there was the Rangers tribute, was when we won the trophy at fifty five and we get presented on the pitch, and when Jimmy gets handed the trophy, 
was the wee tear in his eye, you know, and, and he wipes. And that for me was today, which is that's when I felt it most. <clears throat> Absolutely. Really one of our own. Really was. And last but not least, um, a debut for the pod tonight, Craig Campbell. Craig, thanks very much for joining. And um, it's probably a, a, bit of, a bit of a tough start to your podcasting debut, eh? Hi, uh, Colin. Um, do you know, see, see for about a week I've been like looking forward to this and looking forward to it. And, and then obviously Sunday happens and um, there's mixed emotions there and I'm going, right, there's some really positive stuff to talk about and look forward to Thursday. And, and then I, I go into work today and um, I got a text from my big pal that was, I think he's an ex-player and um, he texts me saying the news and the first thing I do is I Google Rangers, Jimmy Bell, and there's nothing, and they go and follow, follow, and there's nothing, and I'm like, that, that's just a rumour, um, and then five, ten minutes later, um, it's the, the information starts coming out, and um, do you know, Walter Smith's passing really, really hit me, and um, it was it was like a family member, um, that, that's the only way I can describe when Walter Smith passed away, and I sat there for ten minutes, and um, just... It was just absolute disbelief. Um, I mean, I, I, we were saying it there, like every single one is. Um, I've only known Rangers with, with, with Jimmy Bell there in the sidelines. Um, I've, I've only known that. And, do you know, I was thinking of this when Walter Smith passed away. That, um, do you know, see, when I used to think, when I would see Walter Smith around the club, even during the dark days, and I would see him around the club, you, I almost got this kind of comfort that I knew he was there and things were all right. And and it was it's similar with Jimmy Bell because it's like it's already been said he's he was one of us. Um and, and we're talking about the standards here and stuff. And one of the one of the things that really hits me about Jimmy Bell is that <clears throat> you never I never heard him doing an interview. I never ever heard him talking. Um it was always in the background, discreet. Um I've heard a lot of things getting said about him today about about, about being a servant and I think the greatest service that you can do is like, it's like one of the things when you do something nice for somebody, but can you do it without telling someone? And um, Jimmy Bell done it and didn't he talk about it and just um, didn't he boast? He just went in and done his job. And um, the only thing I can say to the guys, thank you, um, thank you for the service, man. No, I totally agree, Mason. Um, I actually spoke to Craig earlier today on the phone, and you know we, we were both talking about. Jimmy Bell, it's but players come and go. Um, but what really makes Rangers like out with the supporters are just in ordinary people that just live and breathe the club. Um, we all heard the stories about the, the dinner ladies, the ladies in the front desk, the you know the, the staff that look after the, the youth players. Jimmy Bell was a figurehead of that. That was just just what Craig said. It was selfless. It just put his part for, done his bit for the club and just wanted to do it and Greg mentioned about Walter Smith there as well, well that was devastating Jimmy Pell hits a wee bit different because you probably relate to him a bit more, don't you? Yeah, no, no, definitely I think, you know, as we said standards, he just had them standards obviously working with all the managers and players when we, you know, we were best in Britain and, uh, and and it just filters through. I think I, I listened to I listened to a lot today. I listened to Stevie Smith say that when he was coming through uh, into the first team, he thought he had a little bit of a you know <clears throat> bowl, uh, and, and he thought he was you know you know made it. Um, and Jim and he went to take two towels, and Jimmy Bell Jim Bell quickly reminded him and said, uh, "John Greg didn't take two towels, son." So it's just quick, you know, just things like that, just keeping the standards. Obviously, Josh Windass as well today saying uh, apparently larger ups. Uh, Jimmy Bell said to me every day, uh, Loudrop was a proper number 11. You know, just keeping players grounded, but you can just you can just relate to him because, you know, he just loved the club um, and he was there just just out of pure love and, you know, determination. I think that feeds off, at, say, reading all the, all the stuff today, Connor Goldson saying that he won't think about, about Rangers without thinking about Jimmy Bell. I think that just speaks volumes um, how important he was to that dressing room um, and, and, you know, the, the service he gave, he gave the football club. Absolutely, and Davy, um, it's you know it's never it's never nice to lose MD um, like close to you like up for the family, but I think a bit of I don't know a bit a bit of somber relief is 
probably that Jimmy Bell we you know, he died in service to Rangers, he died doing what he loved and the last goal we seen was Rangers thrown into the Celtic net. I mean that's it's a nice it's almost fitting, isn't it? Yeah, <clears throat> fitting tribute obviously wasn't intended as such, but yeah, Jimmy was he was due to retire in the summer. You know, I think this was his last year because his replacement is already in place, the boy that arrived from Morton. So uh, and and one of the the boys that I got the game with, you know, he's posted. You know, it's a shame Jimmy didn't get to uh, enjoy his retirement. But I think Jimmy would have been a uh, maybe his his enjoyment was was being at Rangers and being and serving the club that you know he's he served for for decades. So yeah, it's a it's a crying shame. But you know, I suppose about quality of your life rather than the length of your life. So if uh, if that's a measure of, of someone's existence, then Jimmy's well up there because he uh, served Rangers in, until the day he died. And, you know, that's... Gosh, I, w- I would give anything to, to, to be able to say the same. Yeah. And just to echo what everybody said, and I think Craig said it, thank you to, to Jimmy Bell um, for the service and for everybody to get on for you, the thoughts go out to everybody close to him and especially his family and his close friends. Um so that there is no real easy way to move on to the football in matters because times I guess it, it puts things like a football game into perspective. But we will move on, folks, and start talking about the semi final and the the weekend's game. Um, but I'm going to pick on the new boy, um, Craig, just very briefly. Um, it's your first time on the on the podcast, then. So tell us about tell the listeners a bit about yourself and your time following Rangers. A bit about myself. Um, <clears throat> this will be fun. Uh, <laughs> I nah, so um, Colin, thanks, thanks first of all for giving us a wee opportunity and coming on. And um, I started following Rangers. I would, I would like to say I followed Rangers from the very, very beginning, like three, four. But you know, I wasn't into football up until I was like eleven, twelve. Um, the story is that my grandfather actually took a heart attack and. Um, survived it, I, I'm going to put that out there he, he survived it but he um, took a heart attack the season that Martin O'Neill got the treble uh, and uh, I took over his season book um, for the last six games and uh, I went to the first couple and I was like right okay fair dues uh, and then I went to the, the last old firm game um, and I sat in my pal's seat behind the, the, the Copeland that was just behind the goals and I remember um, I, had a, I had a Union Jack Somebody bought me a Union Jack and I was kind of waving it. And Rab Douglas walked, ran out and he just looked at me and shook his head at me. Uh, and he started laughing. And uh, I turned to him, my pals, uh, my, my, my granddad's pal's son, and I was like, oh, what's that all about? And he was like, they fucking hate you. They, they, they. And uh, I, I just remember after that game, just absolutely detesting him. Uh, and so it's Rab Douglas's fault that I followed him. <laughs> um, but um, ever since then, I was hooked. Um, had a season book for the season after and, um, I, I wasn't so much into it for the, the nine in a row era but um, got to see the, the, Dick, the, the Dick Advocat kind of end of the era and then uh, Alex McLeish and um, I, I um, obviously went on the follow follow thing with yourself Colin and um, really really enjoyed that and <clears throat> listened to podcasts quite a lot and um, throwing my hat in the ring to see what it's like. Happy days. Well, let's kick his ass stick with you. We're not going to spend too much time on it because we've got a huge game on Thursday night, but overall thoughts on a one each draw at Parkhead. Um, obviously, there's going to be a big element of bias with a Rangers podcast. I thought, we, I thought we deserved the victory, but I can see why, I don't know, the so-called neutrals are maybe saying a, a draw is a fair result. I do you know first of all, do you know it was a it was a really, really strange build up to an old firm game for me. Um normally when I'm going into work on a Friday, I've got the I've got the songs on, um I'm like proper getting up for it. The Friday is generally the start of it for me. And, um do you know I was like, nah, uh, there's bigger fish to fry and um Saturday came, didn't really bother, got a good sleep. First time that there's ever been a good sleep before an old firm game. Um, went to the gym on Sunday and just started getting up for it. And what I will say is that as soon as the ball was kicked at the, the start, um, aye. And do you know, my, 
people have said that they were disappointed for the weekend and um, we should have won and what have you. But, do you know, I was just dead proud of the players. Um, we played without Morelos. We played without Roof, Ramsey. Um, I, I, I actually went into that Old Firm game just really, really hoping for something at least positive that we could take into Thursday. And um, to come away from it going, I'm actually really disappointed that we never won that. Um I think it, it tells you a lot about that team that there, there's been a lot um, said about the team over the year about mentality and um, having a having the appetite to, to play for the jersey and um, to a man on Sunday. Um, even players that weren't really playing very well, like Borna Barisic, it's been said, he, he didn't really play that well. But if you look back at the last Old Firm game at Parkhead, he didn't play well, but he, you could tell that he didn't want to be there. Um, every tackle he was in, he was going for it. Every every tackle that every Rangers player went in for, we won. And it got to the point where you could tell Celtic players didn't want to go in for tackles. Um, and for the team that's supposed to be winning the league, um, I think it says a lot about their mentality. Um, so I've, I've said to you that I didn't really bother about the build up. Um, <laughs> I was up at my arms watching the game, and my, my ankle, uh, which is black and blue for the Sakala's. Uh, post uh, this, uh, I uh, her, uh, her foot on get a, a, a good kick in. Uh, I would say that, but um, I I've come away from it going. Do you know what? Uh, job done. We we went there and we, we fought and we did what a Rangers team that I want to see. I want to see a Rangers team going out and fighting. Um, and and we've done more than more than that. Aye, there's so many positives to take. Um... Mason, like especially around the mentality, because that's been the big question though this season. But to this group of players, the mentality, why they just seem to chuck it between January and March every year, but that's for next season. And I know we're got to, no got to spend too much time on it, but it really does sum up our domestic season that every fucking mistake we make, we concede. Yeah, that's exactly it. If, if I could have a 90 minutes to describe our season, that, that would be it. You know, one mistake, um, we concede a goal. Um, we come back into it, but then you know we don't we don't kid off the chances to, to go and win it. Um, so it is story of the season. But I agree with Craig. The build up was non existent, um, and I was thinking about the last Old Firm game, and it was like two weeks because it was the international break, and you're just you know just so nervous each day. Um, but Sunday just didn't didn't at all. But yeah, once the game starts, you just want to you know you want to go and, you want to go and beat him. You see John Terry standing there. With, Scarf and just wanted to, you know, to go to, to have a bad day, didn't you? But um, but no, we played really well. I thought we started we started really well. I think Joe, you know, I, I was very critical of him after the last Old Firm defeat, but I think he deserves a lot of praise because you know we go in there, as I said, with, with no centre forward, and uh, I think he's cracked out to play than that. The good thing is, I'll take a lot of positives as well. Uh, their manager won't change the way they play. They'll play exactly the same way next season. Where Gio now looking at the last couple of old firm games we've won the midfield um i think we've made average players look look very good um i think our midfield is a, a supreme i thought i thought lundstrom was, was brilliant again at the weekend and uh fair play to sakala because that was some finish because i wanted him off at half time if i'm being honest so uh some finish and you know on another day he goes and he gets the winner davy just on that i think your group chat on sunday epitomized every rangers conversation up and down the country for 50, 60 minutes, Sakala's fucking shite. For the last half hour, the, the guy's better than Pelly. I think we fa- I'm, I'm, I'm sure the same uh, thoughts go through fashion's heads. I don't, I don't know what's going to happen next. Because, you know, I, it, sometimes you think his brain's not connected to his feet because it's uh, it's all kind of erratic and there is, you know, the wee Ted McMinn streak in him. You know, but I think we uh, on Sunday... What the, what I took from it, you know, the silver lining to the cloud, you know, is that the league's now dead as a dodo, was that the, the level of commitment the players showed, you know, the change from the game in, in, in early March to, to the game on Sunday was a sea change, you know, in terms because Rangers were, were committed. We were after them. We were dominating them. The one strike on, on, on target they had and they scored from it. So I was a wee bit disappointed when it finished that we hadn't actually taken the three points. I think we, uh, for me anyway, overall, I think we, we deserve to uh, take three points from that game. But the, which augurs well for for Thursday night, to be honest, because I think if we go with the same level of commitment, you know, and, and I've got to say that in the last few weeks, Gio has certainly uh, came up trumps for me in terms of sending them out there. 
Because uh, I mean, last Thursday in, in the away tie, <clears throat> you can't, cannot fault the side for commitment. The game against Motherwell, so we're seeing the same, you know, which I, I would I would say was one of my bugbears about about the side was that sometimes they, they don't have the energy, the commitment, which you know I would want to see. So, but that's certainly not been the case for the last few games, and uh, that, that and it's exactly what we'll require for Thursday night. Uh, I think just on Sakala, by the way, do you know, a, lot, a lot's been said about um, similarities between him and Wee Nacho. Um, and see, see, when he was playing out wide, he's, he, he looks as if he just does not know that position whatsoever. Like, the, the ball comes to him, he's making he's making passes to Celtic jerseys, um, he's letting the ball run out. See the moment that you play him through the middle, um, he, he actually ran them absolutely ragged. Um, and, and he's not, I'm the first to say he's not, He's not the most talented football player in the world, but neither was Novo. Um, Novo, Novo, you would see him against some teams and you would go, ah, he's never seen a ball before. <laughs> and then seeing the big games, like I, I, I remember the, the, the volley at Parkhead. Um, and if, if somebody like Lionel Messi or something scores that, you're going, what a, what a strike that is. Um, but it became just natural that you seen Novo playing against Celtic and he scored. And hopefully... It bodes well for, for Sakala uh, going forward because um, I think if you give him the right balls and it, somebody also said that at something at the weekend as well similarities to, to Kenny Miller see when he's got time to actually think he tends to make the mistakes don't give him any time and, and he slots that ball away and Mason said the way, the way that he took that goal I've, I've watched it back it's like he doesn't he, he, he hits it dead clean he doesn't he squaff it or anything like that and um, I, I, I thought, see the last 20 minutes. The last 20 minutes, he was just, he absolutely ran them ragged. And that's the thing with Sakala. You can tell there's raw talent there. And I think the difference between him, between him and Novo, I think Novo came to Rangers and he was there at his peak and he kind of stayed at the same level for a while. Sakala's coachable. I think um, he has, um, he's, he's had his peaks and troughs and some of his troughs have been terrible this season, don't get me wrong, but you can tell... Um, when he's on his game, he's already a better player than what we signed. Um, so I think he's definitely coachable, and I had, I don't think we'll get too much for him out, out wide. So it's up to him, Davy, just to <laughs> make his claim through the middle. I would say, but uh, fashion Sakala, though, see when he gets the the chance and go. Invariably, his 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 go to club is just to strike it as hard as he can. He doesn't do finesse. Every time he gets a short goal, he absolutely puts his laces through it. He's never going to chip any into the corner. This boy is just move. And the one that he struck on Sunday, which is uh, it was an awesome strike because it, when it when you watch it back, when he when he strikes the ball, it kind of moves through the air with about two inches above the grass and doesn't and doesn't drop until it actually hits the net. It was it was a superb strike, but that's just I mean just strut and goal and it's just hit it as hard as I can. He's never going to clip them into the corner, this boy. No, so here's home. He's, he's listening in. He? If he gets a chance on Thursday, he just fucking puts his head down and fires through it and doesn't think too much about it. Only Thursday then, Mason, let's kick us off. Um, I'm already... I'm already getting the goosebumps just mentioning Thursday night. But 1 0 down away to RB Leipzig. All Rangers need to do is win to keep the game alive. Um, I don't want this to be famous last words, but I think you're off your fucking head if anybody writes off Rangers at home in a European tie this season. Oh, yeah, no. Yeah, that'd be mental. I, I thought they were uh, celebrated a little bit last week. Um, I thought there was a little bit of right. We've we've done the hard work a little bit like Braga, so I'm hoping they experience that atmosphere and crumble um, just like Braga did early on. But um, no, look, we've got to be confident. We've been brilliant um, under Gio at home uh, this season. Um, but the first goal is is really really. We need to get that first goal because uh, Leipzig, it, you know, they get that 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 sort of first goal and kill the atmosphere. Um, you know, it, we're going it's going to be really difficult, but. I did watch them uh, last night, and um, I don't know if they've got one eye on on Thursday night. But you can def we can definitely get at them. I think what we didn't do last Thursday because we set up a little bit differently was was get Tav Tav and uh, Borna higher up the pitch and put put balls in their box. Um, so really hoping Roof fit because that will be a big boost for us. 
Um, but look, yeah, look, you know what? You know, biggest game in what fourteen years since since Manchester. So I think now the players they'll just be you know what what an opportunity. If we all at the start of the season got offered this chance, you know, one goal down at Ibrox to get to a European final, we would have done anything to to get there. So um, let's go and get the first goal and and, uh, and take the game to. Them. You, you spoke about confidence there, Mason. Um, what I really liked, what I've loved here in Fay, the management team and the players since last Thursday, they're quietly confident. They're not boasting that they're going to come in way before when I'm at Ibrox. They have belief in their ability that if they play their best game, then they've got every chance of going through. And that's, if you're not confident going into this game, you're beat before you started. They've got to, they've got to be confident. They've beat, they've beat arguably a better team in Dortmund comfortably in the back garden so for me they've got to be confident they've, they've, they've played un- unbelievably well against Braga who we were a good side as well technical side and, and we blew them away to be honest we should we should have been 4-5 they like and that's not just on the Rangers podcast being very um, over the top that's that is that is, that, that's what it should have been um, but I was guided when, when we conceded that late goal Thursday but listening to Gio and listening to to have Jack Arfield after the game, you kind of get that right. No, they, we're going to be right up for it Thursday night and uh, and let them know, you know, they're in a the game. So love the confidence, Davy. The big debate: who was the best English midfielder post two thousand was always between Lampard, Scholes, and Gerrard. But this was also before John Lundstrom came along, who trumps them all. The greatest player to ever hail from Liverpool. I, I'm never been a fan of one man uh, that takes a team or will make a break a team, but I think a lot of what will happen first tonight will go down to him. And if he if he plays a shadowy how he's been playing, then the the midfield battle it's it, I, th- I think we're going to be in with a big chance of winning it. Let's hope so, Colin. Let's hope so. But John Lundstrom, I mean, what a turnaround in his uh, his time at, at Rangers because I when he appeared initially, you know, you're thinking, well, who's this boy? What's he going to add to the... Uh, and he had, there was a few spell where he had some decent games. You know, there was kind of run of three or four games and then he kind of fell out it. There was a, the danger, I think, some of the support had already made up their mind on him. Uh, so, but, and since the turn of the year, you would have to say John Lundstrom, absolute mainstay. You know, from someone who was, it, it was kind of mentioned in dispatches that maybe January would be the time to find them alone or something, you know. But uh, since then, you would have to say, John and Lundstrom, he's just, uh, what a difference, what a difference, because he is the the tackling midfielder that maybe we lacked. You know, you can see that he's a commitment, not uh, a bit of pace, and he's got the the Hollywood ball in him as well. You know, he he contributes with goals when when the, the chances present themselves. So, Absolutely massive player for us on Thursday. Massive between him and, and Ryan Jack, you know, in midfield. And I think you can see the difference on Sunday, you know, from the last old firm game at Parkhead where we get overrun, whereas in, in the midfield, you know, and they now, I mean, and, you know, the wee gimp with the, with the mask on is now <laughs> wary. Of, Sorry, that got me off guard. <laughs> he's now wary of John Lundstrom, though, because you can see that uh, when... They have 50-50s that he 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 knows he's he's up against a you know a, a decent opponent here and John Lundstrom's going to go for him. So that and that makes all the difference, you know, in terms of the, the attitude in their head. They know he's coming after them. So so for Thursday night, John's a massive player, but there's lots of players you know going to have to step up here. You know, we can't you know, be leaving it to him, but certainly uh, what a turnaround because if you would have predicted this, you know where John Lundstrom is in our team and, and how he's viewed as, as part of the team compared to, you know, how, how it was was being discussed, you know, the, the tail end of last year. So I think there was a few for moving him out in January. It's just amazing how quickly as a support we make our minds up. Um, and it shows we, we don't always get it right, but no, what you said there, David, about John Lundstrom and Ryan Jack, I think they've complemented each other so, so well. Um, Craig, I think the big question for me, um, we'll talk about team selection I, I don't really know who goes in alongside them in midfield um, I think it will be Lundstrom and, and Jack I can see the arguments for Davis if we want to retain the ball a bit more but if we do want to take the game to game to Leipzig do you put in Arfield or Arebo Arebo's been a bit off the boil 
but he's he's still probably a, a better chance going forward than Arfield. What's your thoughts? Do you know Aribo's probably the only one. I hope he's not. I hope he doesn't listen to this podcast because um, he's he's the one player right now that I just wouldn't put into that team. Um, I think um, the the fast pace that we can go at with going forward, he was doing it before Christmas. Um, he was he was arguably the best player that we had. Um, he was absolutely battering teams um, before Christmas, and then you polarise that with. John Lundstrom and I have to say I was one of the biggest critics of John Lundstrom I, I, to give you an idea I, I would liken him um, to at that point um, Bob Malcolm I, I thought he was very similar to Bob Malcolm where he, he kind of stayed in the same spot sprayed a nice pass but no pace um, very little kind of going forward um, and then turn of the year he turns into one of the best midfielders that I've ever seen play for Rangers Football Club. Um, so I a bit of humble pie for myself here. But I think, do you know as well, a lot of people were saying when Gio came in, and he, I think he played him with, with Davis, and it didn't work. Um, but I think Gio's starting to find his feet with the players and seeing where they can play. And, I mean, Davis has played with, with Lundstrom and, and arguably played even better than what Jack and Lundstrom have played. Um they seem to complement each other really, really well. And I don't know if that's Lundstrom getting a bit more kind of free reign and just um, doing what he needs to do. And, um, just echoing what the guys, what you have said there, like, see when Lundstrom, Lundstrom played a kind of central defensive kind of role when, when we played away, there's absolutely no chance he's going to play that on Thursday. Um, but wherever you put that guy, you know he's going to go and do a job and he's going to do it to the, probably better than anybody else on that park. Um, I would I would go for Jack and Lundstrom. Um, my concern is that Jack, for the last few weeks, doesn't he seem like the Ryan Jack that when he came back um, seems to be misplacing ta- uh, passes and um, doesn't he look confident. That's that, that's the one thing about Ryan Jack. Um, you know you're going to get 110 percent off him if a 50 50 is there. He's winning it um, nine times out of ten. He's going to make the right pass. Um, I, I, I just I can't call it. One thing I will say is, and I'm probably going to make a, make a rod for my back. I don't see anything other than a Rangers win. I really, really don't. Um, and the last thing I'll say on this is, you know, see after the dust had settled and um, with, the, with the the news this morning, and then I started seeing the things that the players had been posting on their social media and how much Jimmy Bell meant to them as a man. Um, my mate had texted me and said, I hope that this doesn't really affect the players. And I think, see if the players had any more motivation. This is, they're going to run through a, a brick wall for that guy. Um, and what a better testament to the guy to, to take us to a semi final and remember him that way, man. Um, it's just destiny for me. We're, we're doing it. Mason, you know, I'm a cheesy bastard and I'm a big fan of destiny as well. 150th year, um, 10 years since we were in the depths of the third division, doing it in memory of Jimmy Bell. I know like, this will be the biggest understatement ever, but the territories at Ibrox will be fucking charged. Um, you'll probably see Davy Box, what, say, he sits in the club deck, he'll be swinging after that Europa <laughs> League camera. Um, he'll be using that as a bungee jump, but... Uh, I can't, I can't agree more with Craig Hill. No, what is it? The back cam? Is it called the back cam? I see David the on that. Cam. Yeah. Um, no, nah, yeah, look, it's going to be rocking. I'm I'm really jealous. Obviously, all you boys uh, will be there when you're so uh, be watching it watching it from here. But just, yeah, just, oh, I just can't wait for it. I think after sort of, after the, the semi final, we, we knock them out. It's just been like every day, every time you wake up, you're just thinking, Seville. So, uh, Ibrox is going to be absolutely absolutely rocking and uh yeah look as, as craig says you know if if the players need any more motivation and hopefully they don't but today's news i think you know just give them that extra 10 percent, 15 percent, whatever it is to to get the job done and you know hopefully they do it for him as well going back to the the team selection mason because i think um, i think we're pretty all comfortable on the midfield battle will really depend on the big players turning up for that i think there's probably a bit more of a selection conversation at either side in the defence and the front three. Well, we know Ryan Kent's got to play regardless. Um, 
how the other two set up really depends whether KMR Roof is fit or not. Obviously, KMR Roof available to play, and I hope he is, then he's going to play. Um, there's no doubt about that. Somebody I want to well, ask you about, Scott Wright. Um, I think he, you know, we've criticised him a lot in this, in this pod the last six months, and a lot of people say they didn't play great last Thursday, but I think he had a he got a raw deal. That's a very hard role to play. No seen much of the ball chasing everything down. Uh, so he's starting to grow me a wee bit more in the last uh, few weeks. And I'm not saying we should start him, but I'm not really disappointed if he's used as, a, as an option at any point throughout the game. No, I think I think he's he, he's look, he's got to realise that this is a, the only you know he's, he's not got long opportunity wise. He was running out of chances, and uh, he has he was better against Motherwell. I agree, it was a tough one, one for him last week, but just sometimes I just think he doesn't. He, you know, we're saying about Ryan Jack lacking belief lately, and, and I agree with that. I think Scott Wright sometimes lacks belief, and you see it with his passing slack, and, and other times you know he, he looks sharp. And I think when he's he come on Sunday, I thought he done really well Sunday. He was direct. He looked sharp and. I think it's just a mental thing with, with Scott Wright because I think there's definitely a player there, but just would I start him though Thursday? No, I probably probably wouldn't. Um, I'm I'm really hoping Roof's fit because I, I, as well as Sakala was last half hour, I'm still not convinced he, he should be starting either. But we might have no choice if Roof's out. If Roof's out and Ramsey as well is another one, I'm kind of sitting here hoping that that he can give us an hour, um, which might be a bit too far because I think we're talking about a rebuild in our field. If Ramsey's 60-70% fit, I'd rather him just because of his his, his, his intelligence, his, his midfield runs against Braga. That was he didn't have the best game on the ball that night. Uh, but he's he's so intelligent running forward and what just pulling out. They're playing three centre halves as well. So you need regardless of through plays, you need someone else to pull pull the centre halves out. So um but yeah. Even if we could get the first half out of Ramsey. I, yeah. I know what you said, he didn't see much of the ball, but Ramsey doesn't need much of the ball. He only needs one one chance to do something. Look, if you've got a chance for, for going one on one and you're picking any of them midfielders, you're picking Aaron Ramsey. So I, I'm I'm hoping both of them, you know, we can get them fit and um, you know, they can do the business. If we get an hour out of them then then so be it. Davy, the other end of the park. We've seen the resurgence of Borna Barisic, but he still refuses to defend the back post. Um it's a whole conversation in itself. For me, I, I wouldn't change the, the back four. I think yeah, it would be Tavernier, Barisic, either side of Golson, Bassey. Are you going to change it up if, if you're Giovanni Van Bronckhorst and bringing Balligan? To be honest, my, my own preference would be that we would go Balligan and, and Bassey at left back. But, I mean, if Barisic plays, then, you know, I don't think that's going to be catastrophic because I, w- I would be going with the Balligan because they're pacey up front. They're very... Uh, quick on, on, on the wee triangles around the 18-yard box as we saw last week and as we've seen from them before in Leipzig, you know, they've got some really good technical ball players. They move the ball at pace. I think Balligan might be a better option. <clears throat> Bassey at left back, Bassey bombing forward. You know, so I think Bassey can put in a ball as well as, as Borna Barisic can. So, and for that alone, but if, if it's Barisic or Gio, you know, it's his call. What, uh, as to whether he goes with Barisic or not, then clearly it, it, what's more suited, whatever's more suited to his game plan, really, because he'll have the, the, all the, the pieces of the jigsaw on the table as he puts all this together. So it's really up to him. But for my personal preference, I, I would be uh, I would be going with Bassey at left back. <clears throat> I think we're well, definitely more solid with Golson and Balogun as the centre halves. The only thing that's drawn me towards Bassey at centre half mm-hmm. with Barisic in as if we're chasing the game. I think Bassi's done really well to step out of defence with the ball. And uh, and, and I know we talk about Golson's long diagonal passes, but they just the life out me because Ryan Kent's the weakest guy in the park and we're getting him we're getting him the uh, long balls to go and challenge away. I think um I don't know, I just feel it's a good option to have if we are chasing it. Bass is a better option to step out of defence with, but on the flip side it can maybe be a bit gung ho, and they might leave a shot at the back. I suppose that's a, the catch twenty two of it. Yeah, well, we know that uh, Bar. I think Bassi's got the Hollywood pass in him from from the defence. You know, we can the game I, I, against uh, Braga when you know when he's pinging it straight down the left, straight onto Ryan Kent, who's who's cutting it back. You know, so no, I, it's uh, a tough one for me. But I think Bassi for me is uh, just brings us more commitment. I just get. 
I'm just more confident, you know, as when, when he's there rather than Borna. Borna, I think, is a kind of perhaps a fragile wee thing. And, you know, the goal that, that which we lost on Sunday was almost a repeat of the last one at Parkhead where he's beaten at the, the post, you know, when he's he's failing to, to you know, track the, the runner and, and, and get, you know, get get to the ball first. Get, I mean, it's, it's amateur stuff, isn't it? But uh, for me, born up. <clears throat> I mean, I think then from what Mason's saying, I would I would have Ramsey in there because the if, if he's, if we can get a, a tune out of him for the first half, then I would take it, take it all day. And, and set the tone of the game, you know, put them on their heels, get the crowd roaring, and uh, and let's take them the whole road. So I think it's how we start. And, you know, and was, as we also mentioned, the first goal is going to be so important. Because I think if they score first and it goes to two, you know, we've got a real uphill climb there. Whereas if we can get the first one, get the tie level, then uh, it's all to play for and, and we'll, we'll see who wants it more. And, and hopefully it'll be Rangers that want it more. It's, uh, I mean, it, it's the other wee thing about Scott Wright, though, though, was that I think Scott Wright, for me, it, it just appears that you know we need to, someone needs to sit him down, saying you're a Rangers player, you deserve to be a Rangers player. I think he he sometimes plays like he's someone who's won a contest to be in the pitch, but he <laughs> himself, you know, whereas he needed, whereas Ramsey's the exact opposite, you know, he's super confident. He give me the ball, give me the ball, give me the ball, you know. So there's a uh, Two sides to those players, but I think Scott Wright is a smashing player. And technically, and you saw him, you know, in, in flashes over as we have before. I think he just needs to uh, believe it more. I, I I deserve to be here. You know, I'm not here just as a filler in it. I deserve. That, to be here. That's the difference between him and Ryan Kent. Ryan Kent, he, he can frustrate the life out of you the other way when it's not his game. He'll keep on trying and it won't come off. But Ryan Kent always has a belief that he'll keep on trying something will eventually come off and. You're, you're spot on. If we could inject like Scott Arfield's swagger into Scott Wright, the, the guy would be yeah. winning the Ballon d'Or. Um, you're spot on about it, just he has to believe in himself. Um, Craig, we we spoke about all the different potential lineups um, that we can have um, all across the park. Um, we've probably all got it wrong. Um, I don't know. Gio will probably start Alex Lowry left back instead of Barisic or uh, Bassey. What, what does give me confidence? Uh, Davey alluded to it earlier on. Gio has upped his game in the last month or so. He has. And in terms of his decision making, not just for the, for the start of each game, he's... Uh, I'm taking a lot of confidence how he changes formations and how he uses the subs coming on through the game. So I'm quite confident if we're chasing another goal, we can change it up to press a bit higher. Alternatively, if we do take the lead, uh, it's nice to see that we've got that option of going three at the back and soaking up the pressure, hitting in the counter. Yeah. I think, do you know, I heard um, one of his press conferences, um, I think it was after the Braga home game, and, and somebody had asked him about um, we we pl- obviously played differently, um, and he more or less said um, I don't know if I'm quoting here, but he, he said that he'd, he'd had a better measure of the team that he was playing, um, having played them, um, and that seems to be the kind of way with Gio Vanni from Broncos is that the likes of Celtic, um, the likes of Braga, um, teams that we're playing against, we maybe don't look like we're playing to our full potential, and then we go and play them again. And and we've got we've got their measure, um, and and that you kind of spoke about it the, the confidence that seems to be coming from Rangers just now. It's not a bragging, it's not a boastful. It's just that we know what we need to do, and we're quite confident that we're going to be able to do that. Um, and generally, leading up to games like this, I'm I'm normally in tender hooks, and um, I'm I'm absolutely buzzing for it. I, I, I genuinely am absolutely buzzing for this because. Um, Obviously, Gerard's instilled that kind of that belief in us um, as a club that we we're where we're meant to be. We're, we're playing at a European level that <clears throat> doesn't matter who we're playing, we, we we should be able to match these teams. Um, and and who'd have thought it two or three years ago? Um, we're playing our progress. Look at look back at progress, um, and then. We're playing against Dortmund, and it's what Mason said. We, we absolutely leathered them on their own back garden, um, 
and then we're playing a team that's that's lower in the league. Yes, they're probably the info- one of the informed teams in the in the German league just now. But um, see, see the last couple of weeks as well. I think the momentum's coming with us. The momentum seems to be dropping from them. Um, I, I watched a wee bit of them. Um, the, the, the game there, um, and they, they, they get beat off a ten a team that was ten men. Um, they look as if they're a bit tired. We don't. Um, I don't know where the energy's coming from. I think again, there's a lot of things that I would say goes down to the, the foundations, the Gerard and Bill and Culshaw and um, that, that that management team. The, the, to to go out and play against Celtic after that that exertion that we had in Europe. Um, and look like the fitter team. Then play against Celtic again there and look fitter. Um, I, I think we're going to go out there. And I want to see Rangers. I don't know if you remember a couple of years ago. And I'm not going to mention the team again that we played, but the team basically took kick off and booted the ball into the corner and basically said we're coming after you. I want to see Rangers doing that on Thursday night. Uh, take kick off and boot it into their side of the park and just go at them um, and chase. Uh, that's when Rangers are good. See, since Gerard took over, like. Um, Rangers that fa- play fast pass, high press, um, not many teams can live with. Um, it's generally when we sit off, that's when teams start playing better against us. Um, I think the first 10 minutes, if if I see a Rangers team that's, that's going to go at them, confidence levels are going to grow um, and the decibel levels and eye books are going to grow as well, man. Aye, it's... I was actually speaking to somebody in work today when they were asking how am I feeling on Thursday, am I confident or am I nervous and it was a bit of both obviously, um, obviously you're never know going to be nervous but I almost started to doubt myself because oh I hated going into a big game feeling confident but Rangers have given me no reason to doubt that they can go and do the job and back to you know what Mason was saying it was you know he's got he's no going to be here so he rub that in again but it's going to be rocking because this isn't me just being a glass half full kind of guy. Rangers have shown in Europe they can they can compete with Dortmund, they can compete with the likes of Braga. Good teams, even Red Star Belgrade, they were a good good side, and we've we've wiped the floor with them at Ibrox. Um, I mean, in Europe, that first eighty minutes against Braga, at Ibrox is probably the best I've seen Rangers play in Europe, um, potentially ever uh, since I started watching the games. There's no reason. Um, there's no reason this side can't do that again. So I think that's a nice time to call it quits, there, gents. Um, you know, I think if we keep on talking anymore, I'll be up to about midnight just going through every possible scenario. But as always, I'm going to come round you one by one, ask you for a goodbye, and as always, a prediction. Starting with yourself, Mason. Thanks very much for joining us for the Deep South. Yeah, thanks for having me, and uh, good to speak to to your boys. Um, yeah, look, yeah, I don't know what I was all right today, but now I'm feeling really nervous again. So, <laughs> um, just can't wait for it. Just, just absolutely buzzing for it. Not a lot of work's going to get done Thursday, I can, I can tell you that. But no, I just, I just hope we, as as, as we was all saying, we just start and get after. Um, and and, and I said that get that first goal and 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 go from there. I'm I'm gonna go with two one for us to to win two one and then win it. Extra time or penalties, but our names on the cup, so they're going to put us through it as they always do. Hair's going to be falling out again, uh, but uh, no, we're, we're going to do it. I text you all the other day saying I don't have another extra time in me. Never mind penalties, man. I'll, oh, honestly, I'll I'll be in the royal. But well, thank you for joining us, Mason. And as always, David Pollock, the Gallon for your stalwart. Thanks for coming on, mate. I am looking forward to it. So I'll, I'll, I think I'll if, if we get the result on Thursday, I'm bringing that club deck camera home with me. I'm going to bring that home as a souvenir because I, I think I could take it out with a golf club, no problem, because it's it's right over my head. But I'm going to go with three uh, one, uh, and we'll win it in ninety minutes. I think uh, if we can get the energy levels up, you know, empty the tank. That's all I ask of Rangers on Thursday: empty the fucking tank, and we go after them. So. Uh, this is a huge game. I mean, with all those games that I have, actually, when you think about some of the draws you've had to go through, and you know, the Annans and the fucking Stenhouse Muirs, and Jesus Christ, man, and then we've come so far. I mean, this is it's just Hollywood stuff, isn't it? If we could go through all of that and get to a European final and win the fucking thing, 
I mean, uh, Hollywood will come calling for this one. It would be it would be brilliant. And all I can ask of the players: go out, give your all, and and we'll take what comes. It's no more than that. And that's that's not an unfair ask. Last but not least, a solid debut, Craig Campbell. Thanks very much for joining us tonight, mate. Thanks again, guys. I absolutely loved it. Um, and like Mason, I don't think I'm going to actually sleep tonight. Uh, <laughs> I think I'm going to put uh, YouTube on and start listening to some songs. But um, I'm going for 2 0 Rangers. Tough penalty. Uh, first half, VAR, because it's just part of the script these days, isn't it? Uh, Favourite three words penalty to the Rangers. Um, but you know, I, I remember the banner uh, when we went to. Um, we went to Manchester and um, see these players but a lot's been said about these players about coming to, coming to the end of the cycle because football teams tend to go through cycles and um, these players have an opportunity for our grandkids their grandkids to be singing songs about them um, just like we there about 1972 man and um, I just think it's it's just destiny do you know what I mean I, listen see if, we, see if we, we don't do it I probably won't ever be back on this podcast um, after seeing what I've just said, but um, I just don't see anything other than a Rangers victory. Um, and I, I'll uh, hopefully be back on to talk about um, how amazing uh, the atmosphere was, and we can rub into Mason a wee bit more. <laughs> no, thanks for coming on, mate. Um, no, I've got the butterflies in my belly after listening to you there um, already writing songs about. Well, we we know the songs in fifty years' time will just be basically an ABBA fucking compilation album. But I'm going to I'm going to join Craig in the two now. Um, it's more hope than anything that it doesn't go extra time because I've no go to end me again. But two now Rangers and. Ibrox will be Charles. So it was already got to be an emotional game. Um, the sad news about Jimmy Bell will just add another layer of um, deep emotion for the for the terraces and even the players as well. So we'll be celebrating a, a legend on Thursday night and this is a group of players' chance to become legends. Get into a European final, they'll go down in history regardless. So you're, you're right, Craig. This is their chance. It's, a lot of them are going to move on. Chance to go out in style. Um... So thank you all for joining, uh, thank you all for listening and enjoy Thursday night, um, these don't come along too often, we are the people.